Welcome everyone to our SHS training. If you notice, I did not call it a beginner training because um, as of this month, we're going back to one training per month. Um, the next training will be run by Rupali on October 6th. So um, just wanted to let you know that, that it's truly a monthly SHS training again, starting this month. And feel free at any time though, to write us questions. You don't have to wait for a training to ask your questions. As you can see the emails down there at the bottom of the screen, at any time you can write to me or Rupali and ask us a question about functionality. Um, all questions are welcome. Doesn't matter if you think it's you know too simple, we don't. Please just send us your questions and we'll be happy to answer them or build it up um, and come to the training with your questions. We welcome um, you know, all questions during the trainings. It's, we like to see people come with their questions. And so uh, we're gonna get started today and just write your questions in the Q&A box or the chat window. Rupali is here today helping me field your questions. And so just feel free to write them and Rupali will get to those. Are there any questions to start, Rupali? There is actually one question, Lucy. Um, Ripka is asking, is it possible to search in two languages simultaneously with one word? Um, for, I, I mean, specifically like a disease state, you know, that would be the same word in both languages. Um, um, I'm not sure you can do that, Wibka. Um, yeah, we have under. Go ahead, buy, Lucy. Yeah, if you buy a, um, if you specify that you want, you know, a certain language, we do have other languages to choose from. But right now, I have what's called an English installer, so I can only see English in my program. Um, but you can you can buy a program that has um, German language. You can buy a program that has French, um, French language books in it. So, you know, there are some options there, but generally speaking, you're going to have just English if you have bought the English program. Well, I think Wibka probably does have the English German program, mm -hmm. but I think that you have to select a language, um, in your user preferences, right. and it will bring up that collection of books um, that you have in, for example, if you choose German, it will bring up your German books and you're working in the German um, world within right. the computer, within the program. Right. And then if you switch it to English, then it will bring up your English books and repertories. I don't know that you could search simultaneously in both languages but I will certainly confirm this with the technical team. Wipka has another question, which is how can I switch between two windows? Uh, we, uh, I've tried it, but it will not work. Um, when you say two windows, Wipka, could you clarify that, please? Um, I'm thinking, well, this is what I will show you and then please let us know if this isn't what you mean. So here I am, I'm in repertory module with um, my, my photo icons showing and um you know then if i want to switch to reference library you see this left over here allows you to easily switch from to the next if i want to pop to the reference library i simply click on that open book icon and now i'm in reference library um, if i want to go go to a global search that i've done it's blank right now because i haven't run one but i would just come down here and pop on the magnifying glass um, if patient management, pop to patient management, you simply click on this folder. And so anytime, I mean, I can, I can just easily jump to any one of the modules by using that um, palette on the left side. Did that answer your question? Ah, uh, so she meant, um, she's saying, uh, I meant, can we have both? Uh, open uh, English and German and switch between them. So I don't think you can do that. 
No. As um, Polly mentioned, um, if you had bought a program that was both German and English, you could choose to switch between back and forth between them. But you, you know, I'm going to allow Vipka to talk, and so maybe she can clarify uh, live. Okay. Okay. Um, you're unmuted now, Vipka. So uh, I'm sorry. Could... Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, it was meant if I have two windows open, like um, uh, two remedies or whatever and then just switch between the sides. You see in Windows, you just have to take the tab and then you, you change. Um... Do you mean, okay, so let's look for two remedies. So we have aconite. Yeah. And it's then just... let's look for gelsinium. Yeah, and both uh, side by side. Yes. Yes. Now, you don't want to click the next one. Uh, just a regular. No, click. I don't. I want them. Uh, I want them side by side. Right. Right. So I'm explaining. So if I were to just click that, it would replace my aconite tab. I'm going to right click on a Mac that's holding down the control key as I click, and I'm going to select this message. Open in a new window, and so now I have gelsimium in this tab. Aconite is in this first tab. And uh, to put those side by side, I'm going to come over here and this icon here, compare the tabs side by side. I'm going to bring the aconite one forward. So I'm choosing that one and I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see them side by side. Is that helpful? Yes. Did you and then I, how do you, uh, how do you change? How do you go from gesimium to aconite and back? Just um, with cursor or? you? Yes. So I've got my cursor over on the gelsimium side and I'm, I'm scrolling. Yeah. You have scrolling on that side. And then my okay. cursor is on the aconite side now and I can then scroll there. Okay. Oh. That's okay. That was, I thought it would be easier. Okay. And okay. So, Thank you. Yeah, sure. Is there anything else? Yes. Two more questions, if it's okay. Sure. If I uh, if I want to search without synonyms, how can I do it? Um, but, search without synonyms. Well, um, you don't have to ever use a synonym. Um, I, I to put it out, in, but it didn't work. Okay. Um, give me an example, if you wouldn't mind. So I'm going to be up in global search now. You can see how easily I went to global search. I just yeah. looked in the, in the window up there. I didn't have to be in global search to use that window. I can just click up here wherever I am in the program. So, for instance, um, somebody had written to me about odorous. Um, you know, you can just search one word or you can choose to use synonyms. And so pungent would be another one perhaps for that. Uh, you, but I didn't have to use that synonym. I could have just done odorous and searched that. I didn't have to do pungent. This drop down menu that comes, you, you can choose not to use it also. Um, am I answering your question? Uh, it, I didn't want to use synonyms. Right. So you don't- In the you global search. You never have to. You can just use one word. Yeah? Yes. I but can if I do this, mm -hmm. uh, if, if I do this, I will, automatically uh, uh, have the synonyms in it. Well, it's because they're in the rubric. It's not that you have, you know, let's run this search and I'll show you what I mean. Mm -hmm. So we're running this search, just the one word, no synonyms. 
and you can see um for instance when you come down to mouth let's go to a chapter uh you know you you get other kinds of words yeah. you might be able to use but this is the rubric this is the rubric that's in the repertory it has nothing to do with the program having pulled those words i see what you're saying you want just the word just the one word yes yeah i would, i would just clear this word okay and so what you can do then is you can um come to the actual repertory um do you have an example that you want me to look up yes uh, it was uremic uremic yes and what chapter sorry i'm trying to uh, well, I, I wanted to you uh, to search in the reference library. Oh, okay. Um, you know, uh, the, we we are coming soon, I think, with a feature where you can limit to one word in ah. the global search. Currently, you can do that in repertories. Um, yeah. But in global search, you can't yet do that. Because the word this up here is going to bring up related anything with that word or what's related to it in reference library. But in the future, you are going to uh, SHS will have the feature of limiting to just the one word for okay. both references and repertories. Currently, um, you can do it in repertories. Yeah. And I can show you that. So for instance, let's go to the mouth chapter and I'm going to use this little search window here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yes. And so you've maybe used this before. Um, and what I want is the whole word. Okay, I don't want, and I want match, um, match that, the whole word. Hit okay, and I'm gonna run this. Okay, let's just put the word odor and we're gonna run that. And so you can see you have the word odor coming up. Yeah. In every one of those rubrics. Okay. Yeah, thank okay. you. And yes, very fine. And just to tell you, I studied the, I don't know what's in English, Bedienungsanleitung, how to do it. And it was really good, thank you. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, just one more question. If I, uh, <laughs> this is how great. To create, this, is what we're, this is what we have these sessions for, truly. Uh, how to create a new rubric. How to create a new rubric. Um, yeah. Well, we, so you're thinking about when, for instance, you have, um, you're not talking about combining rubrics, right? You're talking about actually creating a new one. And creating, a new one. creating a new one with, with two different concepts. And that is something that will also be coming in the future. Okay. 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 That, that's it. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Oh, you're welcome. Rupali, any other questions? Um, yes. So uh, Hasnat is asking, how can we search medical terms? So I guess the best way is to put the medical term up here in global search. Um, um, let's say, well, I'm trying to think, sciatica, would that be a medical term? <laughs> no, mm -hmm. um, let's think of a better one. Albuminaria. All right, so there's a search term, uh, a diagnostic term. Um, so I'm gonna run that. She's also suggesting tinnitus, so we can okay. do that as well. That as well, and you can see it just comes up um, wherever it's found in the repertories. Or if I want to switch to reference library, I click over to that tab and see um, I get that word as well and related words. Um, so let's do tinnitus. Mm, T U S. Okay. Oh, it, it 
wow, that was nice. Still, it. yeah, yeah. It, it spelled it correctly. <laughs> it picked up my misspelling. Usually when you have misspelled a word, it's read up at the top. So that's usually a clue. But um, but anyway, that's how I found this. And noises in the ear, you might want to put a synonym um, noises to pick up any rubrics about um, noise that don't contain that diagnostic term. So that if you come down here to eat, See, you, you didn't get much here, but let's go ahead and I always get clues about the um, synonyms when I look at the rubrics. And so here you see you have, uh, let's go down to the ears again. And so now you have um, rubrics about noise, um, uh, noises in the ear, not exactly the same. Some of these noise acts isn't appropriate, but um, noises in the ear with stitching. Um, but yeah, so anyway, it, it comes up interesting that, let me just go look in the reliable real fast. change this by itself again. That's interesting. Okay, vertigo. I've clicked on the vertigo chapter. I think tinnitus is related to vertigo, is it not? Probably. Mostly. Okay, so did that that's a good way to look up diagnostic terms. I know certain repertories have more diagnostic terminology than others. So Murphy's um, is one that has the clinical section. It does have the medical terminology. And as a is as well. Don't see that here though for tinnitus. Any other questions? No, we have no questions at the moment. Okay. Well, I will bring up some of the questions that people have written in. I had um, a customer just this week write to me and say, how do you put together um, a symptom with a remedy? Um, she's used to the old programs and she's used to going to search, um, search remedies and words, and she just wasn't putting the two together. She was trying to figure out how to do that in SHS. It's actually quite simple. You come up here and you simply type the symptom, let's say sciatica, and then you type the remedy. Whereas on the old program, you type a remedy in one box on the left and you type the symptom on the right in a box. You put them together here in global search and you can do the very same thing, searching the condition with the remedy. And then you have every instance in global search of the, um, the condition with the remedy, you can see. Now, it was interesting because when I was showing her this, I realized something. She had a filter placed over here. Um, she had placed a filter over here on a rep. She had just chosen the complete repertory and this was a, this had applied. And in her doing that, I realized you can have a filter here and run a filter over here at the same time, which I hadn't realized. It's interesting to know. So when we run this, you can see that the only book that's coming up now is the complete repertory because I have this filter on over here. And Rupali, what's interesting, remember last training when you were asking me about putting two filters in the global search window? Yeah. And I was like, well, I wonder if I can do that. You know, if I can, if I can put a filter over on the, you know, the right side and it in the window, I wonder if I actually can. And so I tried it. Um, 
and let's see. What's a, what's a remedy that has, yeah, here we go. So you can see that they both come up. So you can actually filter yeah. for more than one thing up here in the, <clears throat> up in the global search window. That's great. I see you didn't put any space between the two filters. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. straight back to back. Yeah. yeah, that's that's good to know. Yeah. Um, and so that's how you search a symptom and a remedy together in SHS. Another question I got, any questions on that? No. Okay. Well, let's see, there are some more. There are there is a couple of um, questions. Vipka is asking, what are the what is the vermulin module under modules and the Mahesh Gandhi module? If you have purchased a reference library for your reference library, if you have purchased one of these books, so I have this book in my library, um, you can come up here to modules and you get more information. So. Over here, this this part of the book is text, and it wasn't you couldn't format the charts over in this part of the book. So you know things like the charts were put up here. Same with the cool. Vermeulen book. Um, if you have purchased Vermeulen's plants, see I've got them here. Um, then when you come up here, um, this information is presented in a, in a slightly different way. So it's not charts, but it's it's just presented in a, in a in a different way that the authors wanted. So that's what that is. Yeah, if I can say a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, uh, as Lucy said, for the Mahesh Gandhi Foundation book, it is primarily the visual. Uh, pieces that we couldn't reproduce in the program that are given as PDF. So you can look at the chart. Um, and then for the Vermeulen books, we actually, in order for the books to be searchable by global search, they are broken up in general by remedies. So we ex from the book, we extract the remedy information. And then if you, uh, Lucy, if you can actually click on one of the plus signs, um, in reference library. Okay. Just click on one of the plus signs. You'll see that all of the information is presented in the form of remedies in that plant group. Um, but there was other information that was pertinent that was more at the family level and the grouping level that wasn't being presented in the same way. And so the authors uh, were you know, saying that users and readers are going to lose out on that information because of the way that the, the information is formatted here in the reference library. So we basically, that entire information uh, in the hierarchical format that the authors have presented in a paper version of the book is given in the module. So at the moment, uh, modules contains all of the extra information in a book that couldn't be captured in the way that the reference library presents it. And so we present that in extra information under modules for the moment. Um, I think going forward, um, there will be a, a couple more modules coming in besides the Vital Quest module and we might have to rename some of those menu items for the future. Okay, great. Any other questions? No, uh, Mamta is asking, um, there was a rubric I think, which I'm not recollecting um, that said tinnitus. Oh, I see what she means. There was a rubric that came up that said tinnitus, but the remedy count was actually zero. Um, and she's wondering why that comes up as a rubric. What does the zero actually mean? 
So yeah, I just wanted to point out um, the only reason that the zero comes um, as a remedy count is either if there are cross references after it or if there are sub rubrics after it. So in this case, you can see you know, uh, the the rubric itself has no remedies, but there are sub two sub rubrics after it that do have remedies, and they they appear right after the rubric. Um, so when you see that, you know that these are two sub rubrics nesting within the super rubric. Uh, but if you end up seeing after the tinnitus zero rubric, if you end up seeing a completely different rubric that doesn't look like sub rubrics then that's um, your indication that the only reason that showed up is because there are cross-references to that rubric. Like um, this one. Like this one, exactly. Let's go there. And you can see these are the suggestions. Yeah. These are the cross-references. Right, Because exactly. there are no sub-rubrics. Yeah, exactly. Okay, there is another question, Lucy. Okay. Um, is Kat is asking, is there an overall map of all the plant families in a graphic form? Well, in Kingdom Graph, um, you can drill down. You have to have an active clipboard for it to work properly. Um, also in, you know, in, in the Vital Quest notes uh, under plants, you have quite a lot of information that you can get on the various plants, but it's, I wouldn't call that a graph. Um, but let's throw a few rubrics on a clipboard. Um, and I'm gonna go out of the ear chapter. Add something from here to go. And so I'll close these windows. So we have some rubrics. And then when you come into the Kingdom Graph area, and you click on plants here, it, 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 it's all relative to what is on your clipboard. Um, you can see the various um, systems, you know, and you, so you choose which one you want. And then you start to drill down according to what's on your clipboard. Now, this may not be at all what you are looking for, um, but there's that. And you can also come into plants overview. Rupali, can you think of anything? Um, well, there? so actually, um, it depends on which plant system you're working with cat um and you don't you don't have to have a clipboard you can still just come into uh, the kingdom graph section and depending on which plant uh, classification system you prefer you could just go into one of these boxes if whether you're working with apg4 or cronquist which are the two more prominent systems and they will it's not represented graphically, but it, it it's represented visually, I would say, is you can see all of the, like for Cronquist, you'll be able to see all the sub, the, the orders, the class, the subclasses, and then within the subclasses, you'll be able to see the families, but it stops at the family level. You don't actually, because the remedies are too numerous, it doesn't go to the new, to the remedy level. Um, so, you can, it's it's sort of a click through um, diagram in a way. It's not a complete uh, graphical representation. I know what is popular with the APG4 method these days that I have seen Jan Scholten use and also Dinesh Chahan uses that, is that tree with the branches. Um, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, you know, and then the, the tree is, is the angiosperms and then each of the branches are the different, you know, orders, etc. Um, I don't, I haven't seen anything like it for the Cronquist. 
Um, but you can certainly come in here and you can see the sub the orders of the subclasses and the families. Um, so I I hope that's helpful. We do have the we do have a plan to make the the kingdom graph mod you know module within the program more sophisticated and increase the the program's capability to handle images, which is what is limited at the moment. So you can see that's why we're stuck with circles and boxes. And then in the module section is where we're giving graphs as PDFs. Um, so we hope to improve the program's ability to work with images and then, you know, then we can have probably more graphical representations. Um, there's another question, Lucy, and maybe, you know, could you show the superclasses within the example? You we want to take that? that? Um, well, we do have this category. I think it's um, still a work in progress a little bit. Um, again, related to the clipboard that I put together, that's why there are two different colors of blue here. The darker the blue, the more this, for instance, superclass four is represented on the more than superclass one. And if I click on four, for instance, it lets me know um, that the Ferrum series is what's on that clipboard. So Rupali, you can say more about that because I don't know as much about superclasses yeah. and subclasses. Yeah. yeah, so we're still working on completely incorporating the superclass information as you as the people who work with superclasses will know, it means reclassifying our entire list of remedies according to a different classification now, sort of a super classification on top of minerals, um, animals, and plants, um, fungi, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a huge body of work and we're kind of getting through it slowly. Um, the notes on super class are, if you have vital quest, are available in note form, just the sort of top line information, not not all of it um, is available as notes in vital quest. And then in Which terms of classification, it's yeah, you want to computer. show that? Yeah. It's, you know what? It's not on my configuration file. <laughs> oh, it's not on your file. Okay. Um, that's, that's okay. Computer. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. It's one of the first tiles when you go to vital quest notes is one of the first tiles is for super classes. Um, and then in terms of classifying um, using kingdom graphs, this work is still in progress, but what Lucy says was exactly right. The, the degree of saturation of the color shows how much more prominent or more indicated that group is um, within that superclass. Um, so, you know, for the random rubrics that she chose, um, um, it's, it's saying, and of course you can see the remedies that are coming up. So it's really obvious because they're all Calium remedies in a way, including causticum, which is row four. So you can totally see why in um, the kingdom graphs, the ferrum series, which is row four, is showing up as purple. Um, and so if you, so, you know, some of the basic work is there and you can try um, putting together a clipboard and then going to super classes in your kingdom graph and, and seeing what comes up as stronger um, and um, you know because if if the fourth super class was indicated then the fourth super class has row four in it it has some mammals in it um, it has the fourth subclass in it so off that I mean it's fairly obvious here but if you had a more complicated clipboard um, possibly that that super class classification in kingdom graphs would have been more nuanced um, than, than what it is. I hope that helped, Weebka. Okay, let me see if there are any more questions. Um, Hasnath is asking, how do I do cross-references? Can you explain cross-references and how to use them? So in repertory module, let's go into one of the chapters, the mind chapter. It's basically a way to 
look at other rubrics that are related and maybe even more applicable. So, you know, let's say you found the noon rubric. Um, you can see here generalities noon around uh, around 12 a.m. You're aggravated. You you could use that one as well. Um, well, this one has a lot of cross references. That uh, here's one that is a rubric that has no bricks, no remedies. And so if you've thought of the word abandoned, if your patient has said, I feel abandoned, and you come and look at that word, then you say, I can't use that, but I can use mind forsaken feeling for there and go get that rubric, which means the same thing. That's the, the language of the, you know, the repertories instead of abandoned. But we put abandon there. Uh, abandon is is there because you're not always going to think in terms of the repertory necessarily, and so it's a great way to you know to give you clues on on what what to look at if you're if you're not thinking in that terminology. Here's here's another one right above it: forlorn, and again the forsaken ties into forlorn as well. Forgotten that has sub rubrics, but you can also go to con confusion of mind. So that's how you use references. We don't have any questions at the moment, Lucy. Okay. So, um, so one thing somebody asked me um, about finding time. So remember, we just had that one about the noon. Um, and so I just wanted to show you something. So we're in the complete repertory. And let's say somebody has insomnia. At, they wake up and they can't go back to sleep at 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, what you can do to find that is if you're in, in this chapter here, complete, I'm going to go get the sleep chapter, which is here. And then you can just simply up here type 3 a.m. And I want it to be the whole word plus the related words. Whenever you have things up here and you want them to be put together, you choose this option. That. And now you can see I have all the instances of three, um, you know, the three and the a and three a.m. To show you something this is um because in some repertories um it's it's different it, there's the actual number i'm down to the reliable for a minute and go into the sleep chapter there there it is and i'm going to run 3 a.m here yep that's what i want And you can see no rubric found, and that's because in the reliable, it's actually a number. The actual number is used in the reliable. So if you're not getting a result in one of the chapters, um, then try to think in terms of, okay, how, let me, oh. Okay, it worked for me earlier. Hold on just a minute. I think. I think there's a space before the three. Okay, is that it? Let me try that. Or maybe there are periods, I think. I'll go that maybe. Somebody didn't work. Let me get it. It worked up. There it is. Yeah. There it is. So um, just be aware of, you know, you have to be kind of ex using this window. It's not like global search where it kind of finds everything related. You have to exact in this window here. And so in the well, it's the number and AM with the periods. And in the complete, it was three spelled out with AM without periods. So um, just wanted to point that out so that you can, again, be aware of how this, this little window here is pretty small. And okay. then if there are no questions, yeah. Go ahead. There is one question. Mamta is asking, which filter should I use if I want to differentiate remedies in the rubrics in the same plant family. Um, 
I'm I'm not yeah I'm not exactly clear if you want to differentiate between the different remedies uh, for the same plant family. Um, I mean, you would you would filter by the family. It would depend, though, at what point you're differentiating. Are you differentiating on a clipboard, or are you just looking for? Are you fishing for rubrics to see, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in that same plant family, which remedy is more indicated for a particular uh, pathology or mind state? So it would it would depend which module you use depending on at what point you're differentiating. If you already have a clipboard built, right, Lucy, then I would mm -hmm. go to the clipboard and I would filter, use the filter here. Um, and so then you could do the kingdom and if- or... Yeah, I mean, you could put Solanaceae and then, and then see. This would be the easiest way, I think, because it would show you the remedies and how they play out in the different rubrics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question, Mamta? Okay. Yes, yes. She, so that does answer her question. Okay, good. So um, it was here in the clipboard is one way and want a broader search, you come out. Yes, it would be in global search. Yeah, or even advanced search would be a good way. Right, that would be um, too. Yeah. So uh, no questions at the moment, Lucy. So if you okay. would like to. Uh, one last question that, somebody wrote to me was, how do I study single remedy rubrics? And mm -hmm. the best way to do that is up here in advanced search. Um, let's say that you want to know, and especially it, it related to a, um, you know, a certain chapter. You can, you can certainly look at all sections, but you can ch choose chapters as well. Let's say that we wanted to look at just one. And we want to look at aconite as well. Okay, so I'm going to pick those two remedies and I'm gonna look in the mind section. I'm kind of interested in the anxiety for those two. Um, and here's, here's the important piece the number of remedies and rubrics. What I want to look for right now is I want to see the single remedy rubrics. So instead of having any number here, I'm going to choose one. All right, and now I'm going to search um, where I'm going to actually find all the single remedy rubrics for those two remedies that I selected. And you know, I can see here, this has to do with anxiety and these are the remedy, these are the rubrics. So you can see that Gelsimium has the cheerfulness, the care, um, anxiety after carelessness, and aconite. You've got the extension to the head, and so on. So that is how you do that. And of course, there are other options up here. Um, you know, you can. You can make it like if you're just wanting to see the small rubrics, you know, you can pick a doesn't have to be a single um, single remedy rubric. You can choose whatever size rubric you want if you want to extend it out. Any questions on that? No. Okay. Okay. I appreciate everyone coming. Thank you so much. And remember that. We will not have a second training this month. The next training will be October 6th. It's going for the first Friday of every month. And thanks again. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.